Hi everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I have been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. In this video, I will tell you about oxygen concentrators and oxygen generators. Be sure to watch this video to the end, because you will learn about how to properly select these RAS equipment units, in which case it's better to put an oxygen concentrator and in which case an oxygen generator is more appropriate. I will show you what the concentrator produced by my company consists of and we will definitely figure out with you what is better, when these equipment units are needed, where in the system they are located. So watch this video to the end, you won't regret it after. And here we go! Well, let's start with the fact that fish breathe, fish and rats consume oxygen. I think everyone who watches our channel, everyone who is in the topic, understands this very well. We oxygenate the water with the help of an oxygenator. The oxygenator is an oxygen dissolution device. It does not produce any oxygen, it only dissolves it and mixes with water. We won't talk about it today, because I will release a separate video about dedicated to this topic. I also have a video about oxygen production, where I explain in detail how much oxygen fish need, how it's produced and supplied to the system. In general, watch separate videos on the channel and you will definitely understand everything. And today we are going to talk openly and frankly, we will compare oxygen concentrators, generators, medical oxygen concentrators and industrial ones. So, in order to dissolve oxygen in an oxygenator, you have to get it from somewhere. Well, I guess that makes sense. Where can you get it from? The first option is to buy it ready-made, either oxygen cylinders or liquid oxygen. I'll tell you straight away, lately it has become very expensive, at least in my country. I'm not talking about bottled oxygen. For example, in Russia it costs 15 to 20 US dollars per cylinder. That is taking into account that 6 cubic meters of oxygen are contained in a cylinder at a pressure of 150 bar. It turns out that each cubic meter of oxygen, 20 divided by 6, costs more than 3 US dollars. For Russia it's certainly very expensive. Liquid oxygen is certainly cheaper, but nevertheless it's several times more expensive than producing your own oxygen. And by the way, during the pandemic of COVID, oxygen simply could not be bought, because it was a real deficit. Therefore, the production of own oxygen has been profitable, interesting and reasonable. Well, to begin with, the atmosphere contains about 20% of oxygen and 80% of other gases. This is primarily nitrogen, but also carbon dioxide and some others. It turns out that there is only about one-fifth or 20% pure oxygen in the atmospheric air that we breathe in. What do an oxygen generator and an oxygen concentrator do? In principle, they work following the same principle. The fact is that the base of the generator or concentrator is a zeolite column. It's a large tube or tank filled with zeolite. By passing atmospheric air under pressure through the zeolite, you filter the air. Thus, pure oxygen with a concentration of 90 to 95% passes through the zeolite and other gases, first of all nitrogen, are retained in it, as in a molecular sieve, for example. Then these gases are released into the atmosphere. And that's how oxygen is got. And that's the principle of the oxygen concentrator as well as the oxygen generator operation. Probably many people know that in any concentrator or generator there are two zeolite columns. Why are two columns needed? The reason is very simple. While one of the columns is in the cycle of air filtration and oxygen generation, the other column discharges accumulated gases of the previous cycle. It turns out that the two columns work alternately. The one is generating oxygen, the second is discharging excess gases. Then the two columns shift, and so they work continuously in alternating cycles. In some cases, there are maybe more zeolite columns, but in most cases there are two of them, definitely no one. What are different types of oxygen production equipment? I would personally distinguish three main types of oxygen generating units. The first group is medical oxygen concentrators. This is the cheapest, simplest option. A medical oxygen concentrator works on the same principle as everything else, but it has a much smaller volume of zeolite and cheaper component parts. 
That's why such equipment is compact and quite inexpensive. What are the disadvantages? Well, first of all, such equipment is much less reliable than more serious industrial equipment. It doesn't operate for a long period of time. It can easily break down in a year or two. It's quite capricious to operate in conditions. Zeolite can easily get wet, clogged and so on. And of course, as a rule, pressure is still low. Well, for example, medical oxygen concentrators of the most renowned brands have an outlet pressure of about 0.6 bar. What is 0.6 bar? In fact, it's less than a pump can produce. What does that mean? It means that such a medical oxygen concentrator cannot be used in pressure cones as it's impossible, because the pump will simply crush the oxygen concentrator with its pressure and will flood it with water. Because the pressure at the outlet of the oxygen concentrator must be higher than the pressure of the pump. It can be used very carefully in combination with low-pressure oxygenators. And also it can be used with non-pressure ones. And its other major disadvantage is its small capacity. And as a rule, the maximum capacity of a medical oxygen concentrator is not more than 10 liters per minute, with rare exceptions. Sometimes there are 20 liter medical oxygen generators. And a 10 liter oxygen concentrator is sufficient only 1.5 tons of fish held in the system. And what if you have 10 tons or 20 tons of fish held in the tanks? Will you provide for 10 or 20 such oxygen generators? Well, of course not. You have to look for some other solutions. And there is another solution. And that's using industrial type oxygen concentrators. For example, like this one, designed specifically for rest systems. They have a similar principle of operation to conventionally medical oxygen concentrators, but they have the following difference. Firstly, they have a higher outlet pressure, enough for a pump or an oxygen cone of any capacity. The second important issue is the flow rate. Such concentrators are not designed for 10 liters per minute flow, but for up to 80 liters per minute. And the third is, of course, the use of more reliable component parts than those used in medical concentrators. And the third type – industrial oxygen stations. There are stations that produce up to several hundred or even several thousand cubic meters of oxygen per hour. This is already very powerful equipment. Large zeolite columns, a separate external compressor, a receiver and so on. Let's figure out what the fundamental difference between oxygen concentrators and generators is, because many people either don't know it or confuse them a little bit. The difference is as follows. Basically, the equipment is almost the same. Both concentrators and generators have the following basic units. A compressor that blows air, receivers for air and oxygen, main filters for dust removal, moisture removal units and so on. Also, there is an air cooler. The most important thing that is needed is a constituent part of the concentrator. In addition to the zeolite column, the air must be treated off dust, moisture needs to be cooled, so that oxygen can be produced efficiently, and the generator or concentrator operates for a long time. The only difference is in the approach. The point is that in medical concentrations, small compressors, small capacity compressors that pump the air are used. In industrial stations, large and powerful industrial compressors are used. The receivers of oxygen concentrators have a volume of a few liters, while in industrial stations they have a volume of several hundred liters. Also, in industrial generators, zeolite columns are many times larger and more powerful. And the component parts used for such generators' production are of course high quality and more reliable. Another very important difference between concentrators and generators is that as a part of concentrations, the compressor works all the time. You switch on the concentrator and it starts working and runs and runs without stopping. In generators, the compressor is switched on by a pressure sensor installed in the receivers. It creates a certain pressure in the receiver and switches off. Thus, in case of low oxygen consumption, the oxygen station, presuming oxygen generator, can regulate the consumption. Unfortunately, a concentrator can't do that. Well, and usually it doesn't need to, because it's of relatively small capacity. 
this get into how to properly calculate the required capacity of an oxygen concentrator or generator. To do this, I'll take my phone and let's try to estimate. Imagine, we have 10 tons of fish in the system. These 10 tons of fish consume 1.5% of the feed per day. And also, let's imagine fish of different ages, both grown fish and juveniles. 1.5% is 150 kilograms of feed per day. For each kilogram of eaten feed, the fish consumes about 0.5 kilogram of oxygen. It's a conditional normal value. And that presumes 75 kilograms of oxygen per day. We convert that to cubic meters. We need to divide by 1.3. That's oxygen weight rate. And as a result, we get 1 kilogram and 300 grams of weight per 1 cubic meter. We get 57.5 divided by 24 hours. And finally, we get 2.4 cubic meters per hour. So 2.4 cubic meters per hour is the amount of oxygen that you need to dissolve in the water. Now let's look at it further. The thing is that the oxygenator does not dissolve oxygen in 100% of the water. There are water losses. Usually its efficiency is from 70 to 90%. Let's take the average, for example. We divide by 80% and we consider that 20% of the oxygen that the concentrator will produce for the generator will escape into the atmosphere. And we get 3 cubic meters per hour. And now we also divide by about 93%, which is the purity of oxygen that the concentrator for the generator will produce on average. That's 3.2 cubic meters. 3.2 cubic meters per hour is exactly the capacity of the oxygen concentrator for generator that we need. If you wish, we can convert liters to minutes. So we need to multiply this figure by 1000 and divide by 60. We get 54 liters per minute, which is approximately the needed capacity. The next thing we need to understand is how much pressure should the oxygen generating unit produce at the outlet. This will depend on what kind of pumps you are or will be using. If you are using high-pressure pumps, you are going to need the concentrator to produce even more pressure. If you feed in oxygen directly into the dissolution device, into the oxygenator, the concentrator or the generator needs to give more pressure than the pumps can provide for. In this case, everything is and will be fine. You'll have oxygen fed into the oxygenator and dissolve normally in the water. I completely forgot to tell you. In addition to the oxygen requirements for fish respiration, if you have a nosination unit also required oxygen supply, it will require additional oxygen. How much? Approximately 12 to 15 liters of oxygen to produce 1 gram of ozone. Keep this in mind. That's an additional requirement that you also need to consider. Now let's have a look at the concentrator that we produce. Let's take everything apart. What it looks like, what it consists of. Basically, it's quite simple. We produce oxygen concentrators and I will boast a little bit. We're probably the first and the only ones in my country of origin who make such things. Because there are other medical concentrators with a capacity of up to 10 liters per minute. Or large and powerful industrial generators, which cost from 10,000 to 15,000 US dollars and on what's on the market. What we are doing is somewhere in the middle. On the one hand, our oxygen concentrator is more productive than any medical oxygen concentrator and high-quality components are used. But at the same time, concentrators produced by our company are not as expensive as oxygen stations of high capacity. That's why they are very well suited for rest farms. And that's what we developed them for. We produce them ourselves at our own production facility. What does the oxygen concentrator consist of? Basically, it's stainless steel housing, the controller that controls the whole process. And also, there are the additional control buttons. Well, to start with, the air is taken in by the compressor. The compressor fits the air under the pressure into the cooler, and it's a radiator type cooler. Then there is a set of mainline filters. This is a moisture separator. This is a dust filter. And further, the air is supplied through certain valves to the zeolite columns. In general, the process of air filtration to pure oxygen takes place in zeolite columns. Two columns work alternately. And at the output, we get pure oxygen. Pure oxygen is supplied to this outlet through a rotometer. The rotometer controls the flow rate. 
It's such a cabinet with the circuit breakers, and that's where the power is connected to. Also, there are cooler fans, and that's pretty much it. The design is quite simple. My company welds the columns ourselves, by the way. We don't buy ready-made columns from China. We work completely from scratch. There are various capacities, from 10 liters per minute and up to 60 liters per minute. And recently we started to produce such equipment with a capacity of up to 80 liters per minute. We already produce such oxygen concentrators. Let's talk about what are the most common mistakes when selecting oxygen concentrators and oxygen generators. The first one is probably the wrong pressure setting. I have already mentioned that there are medical concentrators that produce very low pressures at the outlet. It's just less than the pump pressure. So the pump is more powerful than the concentrator and doesn't let it work properly. As a rule, large industrial generators do not have such problems because they provide 3 to 5 bar at the outlet. For example, this unit can easily provide the pressure of 1 to 1.5 bar, which is enough for any pump. The next mistake is selecting low capacity. In fact, not everyone can correctly calculate the fish need for oxygen. Therefore, very often I have encountered situations when there was simply not enough oxygen for the fish because the selected capacity of an oxygen concentrator or generator is too low. The next thing is a wrong installation method. In this case, the problem is not due to wrong calculations, wrong capacity selection. It's due to the installation of the oxygen concentrator. It's very important that any such equipment is located in a clean and dry room. There should be no dust, the moisture should not exceed a certain level. Otherwise, it will result in very fast failure of any equipment unit, especially such equipment as an oxygen concentrator or generator. Dust and moisture can ruin any unit of equipment. Next. Absence of backup units Imagine you have a rest form equipped with one oxygen concentrator or generator. And then it fails. You have only 30 minutes to make it work again, otherwise all your fish will die. Of course, any reparation work of such a unit takes longer than 30 minutes. That's why it's important to have a standby unit. Not necessarily a unit of 100% of required capacity at least two units by 50%, so that if one of the units fails, the second could temporarily sustain the system. Personally, I stick to the rule, two units operating at 70% capacity. That is, if one of them suddenly fails, then you can operate the farm at 70% capacity for quite a long time and successfully, until you repair the first unit of equipment. And the last, probably the most common mistake, also rather related to such equipment operation, is the absence of a non-return valve. If suddenly a concentrator stops and water flows back from the pump, all the zeolite will be flooded. So keep in mind, be sure to connect oxygen supply from the concentrator or the generator through the check valve. That's probably all. I tried to give you as much information as possible. Everything regarding oxygen concentrators and generators. What they consist of, how they work, I've shown you what my company can do in terms of production. I hope this video was useful to you. If so, press the like button, subscribe to my channel. It's Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to grow fish and make good money on it. Bye!